As 2014 came to a close, so did the U.S. combat mission in Afghanistan. Most of the troops are home now. About 10,000 will remain, mostly to train Afghan soldiers. Laura Logan was given rare access inside the transition for 60 minutes. America's longest war is being reduced to dust and rubble. You can see it here at Bagram Airfield. Half the base is gone. Barracks where soldiers slept torn down. Bunkers bulldozed into piles of sandbags. <laughs> Equipment and vehicles shipped out at a relentless pace. And close to 300 U.S. bases shut down to meet the deadline set by President Obama. Much of what is left now belongs to the Afghans. We've been at this for 13 years, been a lot of blood, sweat, tears, uh, but I've seen some good progress as well. 57-year-old John Campbell is one of the youngest four-star generals in the army, and this is his third tour in Afghanistan. To show us what billions of dollars in foreign aid has done to make Kabul more modern, he flew us over the city just hours after we arrived. This was among the darkest capitals in the world when the U.S. got here. Now the ancient city is ablaze with light. This is a perspective people don't get. Kabul at night here, the lights. When I came into Kabul for the first time with the, the Afghan forces when they took the city from the Taliban in 2001, there wasn't a single light. Just take a look at the highway lights. But millions of people across Afghanistan are still without power and the lack of security threatens whatever progress has been made. Last year was the deadliest of the war. More than 5,000 Afghan soldiers and policemen killed. Good. At this memorial down south in Kandahar, General Campbell paid tribute to some of their fallen. Afghan Major General Abdul Hamid was at his side. He lost close to 200 of his men this past year. You believe? that the Afghan security forces, particularly the Afghan National Army, doesn't get the credit it deserves. It's the number one respected institution in Afghanistan. A couple years ago, I probably wouldn't have said that, but today it is. They've taken this fight on. They've got them through two very, very tough fighting seasons, and the last one predominantly all on their own. The Afghan government can't afford to pay for them. The Afghan army, the police, the Air Force, they're all paid for by the U.S. and its allies. Casualty rates, they're dying in huge numbers, unsustainable according to your deputy. The attrition rates, another area of concern. Yeah, I mean, there's challenges. They know that the army they have today probably will not be the size several years from now. They just can't afford that. The casualties you brought up, you have to take a look and put that in context. So in fighting season 14, their operational tempo was at least four times greater. So you expect probably casualties to go up a little bit. You can see Laura's full report, including an interview with the new Afghan president this Sunday on 60 Minutes.